Welcome to Norfolk Perspective City Slice. I'm Bob Batcher, and I'm here with a very special guy, and I think has become a friend over the years, William Harrell, CEO and President of Hampton Roads Transit. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on the program. Well, I'm looking forward to having a, a candid conversation with you, and maybe take a little personal too. Sure. Here's the first question. How'd you get here? Uh, actually, I carpooled over here with my team. You know, one, you of the, one of the challenges that uh, we have with the existing transit system is that, you know, not having a dedicated funding source, many of our buses run every 30, mm -hmm. uh, 90 minutes, 60 minutes, and non-peak times. So had I ridden the bus here, it probably would have taken me about an hour and 15 minutes, but, you know, with my uh, marketing team I was able to get <laughs> here in about 15 minutes. And, and that was a trick question. Because yes, I think absolutely. We, we tend to look at, and you came on board at HRT right. at, at a pivotal time where yes. you were taking it the next step. Prior to HRT, you were a city manager. You knew everything right. there was to know about Chesapeake, right? Yes, I in grew up in Chesapeake and, and certainly uh, 26 years in public service and, and city management. Uh, it was a, a great experience to, to run my hometown, but uh, I'm certainly enjoying transit and the opportunity to really improve transit choices for our citizens. So how does it work? Let's talk that, because you, you brought up a critical piece. I mean, for a lot of us, we're time sensitive to where we're going from point A to point B, and yet as a mass transit, it's not just a bus. Is it? There are right. ways of putting systems in place. Right. And I think in, in so many cases, people don't realize that it is a transportation system mm -hmm. and transit is a component of that. Uh, very often, particularly in talking with some of our legislators, they unfortunately see roads versus transit when in fact they are a system. And I think if we look out for the future and say in 50 years, will there be increased demand for transit? I think all of the data regarding millennials and the future of our region would say yes, there is a need for greater transit. So we're trying to initiate a program called Connect Hampton Roads where we can envision something beyond what we have today, but high capacity transit, getting the tide expanded, hopefully to Virginia Beach, other parts of the region, having a better bus network that can get me here quicker mm -hmm. so that transit becomes available to what we call choice riders. That's riders like you and I that choose to ride because it makes sense to us. Well, I know when you go to large urban areas that bus is the first choice. Yes. Maybe walking, but because if you tried to drive, it would just be totally inconvenient. And there's a cost to that. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think, uh, unfortunately, in this area, because public transportation is growing in understanding mm -hmm. the public understanding, uh, there's oftentimes a stigma with riding the bus. People assume that that the people that ride the bus don't have any options. Well, it's true that over 60% of those that ride our buses are transit dependent, but we also have max routes that serve commuter routes, that serve major employment centers like Naval Station Norfolk, uh, you name it, Newport News Shipbuilding, where there is a lot of commuter traffic of choice riders. So the bottom line, we want to serve everyone in a better fashion. And we think having a stable funding program really can help us get there. Okay, let's revisit the times when you were in city manager in Chesapeake. Yes. And and you would have heard something like that. I don't know if you did if you did or not, but let's say the visionary, let's think differently. But you're looking at an annual budget for the city, right? That's right. So your decisions were a little different than than they are now? The scope yes. of your decision? Yeah, the scope was certainly uh, much greater as a city manager, and I think that's a great question because I think that speaks to why the funding challenge is mm -hmm. in place for us with Hampton Roads Transit as it stands today. Right now, we compete with other general fund needs. That means school teachers who we all love, mm -hmm. uh, public safety who we rely on each and every day, public works, parks and recreation. So we're competing with all of those general government needs. Now, when we've done research across the country in terms of those viable areas, Salt Lake City, uh, Charlotte, where you have a more viable transit system, when you look at how they're funded, what you see is that about 35 to 40 percent of their operating budget comes from dedicated funding sources. That could be portions of sales tax, it could be a portion of gas tax, oh. what have you. Now, 
Fast forward to, to Hampton Roads, right now 40% of our operating budget come from our six municipal cities. So as a result of that, you know, we are competing with other general fund needs. So Norfolk buys the most services, about close mm -hmm. to 20 million a year. That's a significant investment in the feeder bus, the light rail, the ferry, you name it. Um, Chesapeake spends the lease about 2.3 million. So right now we have a patchwork of different levels of service across the various cities. And what we're saying is there needs to be uniform service so people understand from 5 a.m. to 1 o'clock in the morning, I can count on catching a bus or riding light rail. And right now we have different hours depending on what city. Well, and the living. city leadership is saying, okay, we have X number of citizens that are being served by yes. this. And you kind of have that today mentality. Yes. It's not very often that a city like Norfolk has said, let's look toward the next 20, 30 years and invest in a, in a system by building a light rail. Well, you know, one of the things, and I think it is time Because nobody was riding light rail when that decision was made. That's right, absolutely. And I think that speaks to uh, the vision of the city of Norfolk. I mean, to be a multimodal city, it took some leadership. But, you know, when you look back at the TAD, and we all know the history and the challenges with the construction, and that's in our past. As Thank we move goodness. Forward. It is, it is. But when you really look at the cost of the construction of that project, you know, 62% of that funding came from the federal government. So Norfolk was very aggressive in getting funding for the project. And now as we're looking towards hopefully a an extension of the tide to the town center in Virginia Beach. You know, there's 50% possible funding from the state, mm -hmm. but the city of Virginia Beach having to pick up that other portion. So, you know, it's a different funding climate, but, you know, the bottom line is the transit system needs to be a regional asset, mm -hmm. but we're kind of funded individually from the cities. Eventually, we've got to change that so it's a regional asset in its funding as well. How do we change that? Well, I think that it begins with education because uh, even members of our board, you know, it takes time to understand uh, the complexity of transit funding. But, you know, we've done a whole lot with the Connect Hampton Roads uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we're undergoing a economic analysis um, which will document what is the business case for improving public transit in the region and why it's important because you know, we need to help diversify the regional economy, you mm -hmm. know, reinvent uh, Hampton Roads is looking into that issue as military spending in this area, you know, maybe it's plateaued. Hopefully we can maintain the assets we have, but as a strategic issue for our region, we have to look to diversify the economy and certainly appeal to millennials. So. Mm -hmm. Public transportation, we believe, as you look at other regions around the country that have stronger transit systems, that's really part of uh, improving economic development and community development in our city. So it's very connected to city government, and we should be part of the fabric of their land use planning. Well, and we see this uh, when you finally are able to act, like with light rail. You get on light rail today, it's so much different than it was when it was first opened when you look out the window and see the development and the change of uh, buildings. I mean, we now look at the number of residents that are moving downtown because there's that connectivity. And that's what, as you mentioned, the millennials are looking for. Um, so today we have, you mentioned it, you wheeled it off very simply, ferry. Yes, between Norfolk and Portsmouth. And I okay. can't believe the number of people that I talk to who live in Portsmouth, come to Norfolk, ride the ferry, and you say, so do you participate in, the, in mass transit? No, I ride the ferry. <laughs> you know? Right. It's okay. Not There's the traditional bus. Yes. How much of that of your business is bus related? That's a great question. Ninety percent. That's okay. the core business, and that's why we're focusing on improving the bus service. But I'll come back to that. Okay. okay now, and then tra there is. I mean, you, you mentioned carpooling, and that was kind of a okay. easy. I mean, you're part of your, what you do is public education. A yes. better use of. The car, right? Absolutely. We also sponsor the traffic mm -hmm. program, which is state funded. But the bottom line is we uh, 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 encourage people to carpool and van pool. Uh, also, the telework. There are state grants available for people to work from home, which certainly uh, you know impacts the demand on, on our road system. So we're very interested in that aspect. Uh, of transportation. Again, it's a system, and that's what we want people to understand and appreciate. And then, of course, light rail. 
Yes, that now, gets all attention. It is. Right. Now, I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, you're a friend now, because we, we were in the trenches for about a year and a half talking yes. to several hundred residents who had been exposed to light rail, start using light rail, and when we talked about the extension to the naval base, their, their frustration was, I got a shovel, I'm ready to go to work now. Right. Right? Absolutely. So how do we harness that enthusiasm and build for the future, and what does that future look like? Sure. Um, essentially, we have been able to work successfully with the city of Norfolk uh, and the state to fund the draft environmental impact statement. That's going to be a very important document where we will look at the various corridors for how the tag can be extended uh, to Naval Station Norfolk. Uh, Old Dominion University, as an example, they are very interested. You know, they understand the value of not having to build more parking garages, but to encourage public transportation and then use that land in a more productive manner. So there's a real opportunity, I think, to continue the renaissance of growth uh, in the city of Norfolk. There was a lot of discussion about an east and a west solution <laughs> with, you know, the eastern solution maybe a, a coming along Military Highway, Little Creek Road. There's an opportunity also to, to improve redevelopment in those corridors. And maybe, you know, as I talk to our planners and we'll hire a consultant to actually conduct a formal analysis, maybe there are two solutions. But mm -hmm. the bottom line... I think it's called a loop. Yeah, <laughs> you, you've been looking at my notes. Here, <laughs> yeah. but, but the bottom line is we really think that, that that particular project has the ability to really transform and increase ridership greatly because, you know, the congestion on 564 is incredible. You know, we've only got about 30 seconds left, but one thing that hit me about that conversation with the, do we do it one way or do we go another way, is mass transit really is not fixing a problem, it's creating new solutions for the region. Would you say that? It is. It, it, it truly is. And it's, it's taking a moment to step back and see are there other ways to move around. And, you know, certainly as Uber and Lyft and all of these other options come forward, I think, you know, we're talking about moving people. It's part of the system. And, and we will be part of the future of Hampton Roads, and we look forward to working with Norfolk in that regard. Hey, I think you're having fun. It is a blast, you know, I, to, to lead a single fo focus agency, you know, and city management from police, the soup to nuts, uh, was a challenge, obviously. But, you know, to be able to focus on an issue that's so important for this region, I'm just thankful and blessed to be in this seat, and I'm enjoying it every day. Well, I'm looking forward to getting some more updates about the future that you yes, guys are driving. absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for joining us.